Why does Don't Look Up look like the most hilarious and frustrating movie to have ever been made? It's packed with A-listers. A-listers who had to quarantine together. They might just be the closest cast to have ever filmed together, which means lots of awesome behind-the-scenes stories. Check it out. Number 1. And we don't mean a kite here. Jennifer Lawrence was flying high as a kite for one scene in the movie. While we don't condone the use of such substances, especially at work, Lawrence didn't really have much to say. Her job was just to react to whatever was thrown at her. And it was agreed upon by the director and Lawrence that the glassy-eyed look would really add a certain element to the scene. I was so tempted to go on the mic and say, hey, let's improvise a monologue. Adam McKay decided against it because it was just too mean. Number 2. Nose rings often seem like a good idea at first. And then you realize how much you need to stick your finger up your nose to keep it straight. And that cool girl attitude suddenly dissipates. Well, things were a little more awkward in J-Law's case, as she had a magnet holding her nose ring in place, and she swallowed the thing. And then, to make matters worse, she recalls and had to spit it out in front of Leonardo DiCaprio. Yikes! Number 3. Put it under your pillow, Jen. And more awkward mishaps. Poor Jennifer Lawrence lost one of her veneers from eating a sucker, and she couldn't get the tooth fixed because of COVID, so they CGI'd it back. Meaning frame by frame, they added that sucker in. Uh, we mean the tooth. I still don't get it. <laughs> J-Law was probably forbidden from eating suckers after that. You'd think there'd be at least one dentist on speed dial for actors. Or a Hollywood budget might persuade them to say yes? Either way, we're grateful for CGI and the painstaking work it must have been to add in post. Imagine if they didn't. Number 4. Sometimes the best costume isn't the sexiest one. Now that the whole world wants to sleep with you. I don't think that the whole world... I wasn't world... talking to you. Susan Matherson, the costume designer, and Jennifer Lawrence worked together to create her look for the movie. They tried all sorts of different wigs, but Lawrence gravitated to the short banged style because she just knew that was the character when she saw it. Despite the fact she knows there are a lot of people out there who think the look is hideous. We personally find that it grows on you. And it turns out doing those thick cat eyes on J-Law was no easy feat, because the makeup artist would constantly tell her how her eyes are not the same size. So frustrating! Number 5. Don't worry, it's just a minor one, guys. Hey, you. Jennifer Lawrence must have hurt the feelings of a glass window when she broke it because it lashed back and cut her face. Poor Jen, from swallowing a magnet, losing a tooth, and now cutting up her face, she really was having a rough time on set. But no major injuries were reported. Although we did hear they had to shut down production for an entire day because of it. Number 6. Sign me up. How much would you pay to live in a house with Jennifer Lawrence, Timothée Chalamet, and Leonardo DiCaprio? Priceless, right? Because that's what happened when they filmed during peak COVID. Turns out, it was not the best experience for Lawrence. We all had to share a bathroom. We can't help but be curious who else was in the house with them. Jonah Hill? Meryl Streep? Have you heard? Was this like Big Brother All-Star? They could have made a show and a movie for the price of one. So we are paying them. Why? Number 7. One Chalamet's freedom, another Lawrence's nightmare. Once they were all out of quarantine, Lawrence recalls being driven crazy by cast members Chalamet and DiCaprio. It was a weird energy on set that day, since the confinement shrank from a house to a car. I don't know what it was. Timothy was just excited to be, like, out of the house. And apparently, Leo went on a spiel about what song was playing in the car, and Lawrence would have just preferred silence. You know, this song was about, you know, blah, blah, blah. It can sometimes be hard to decipher when she's being sarcastic, but we're pretty sure she loves them. And for Jonah Hill, he was thrilled to finally be filming. For me, I felt like I was let out of a cage. And for Meryl Streep, she found it took her a bit to get back into the swing of things. She found it hard to bring back the playful nature and bring the performances to life. Number 8. Practice makes perfection. Unless you're a writer, then only rewrites can do that. It's no secret that Leonardo DiCaprio is incredibly passionate about climate change, which may just be the reason he took on the project, and the reason for the 15-plus rewrites they had to do for one scene. We worked on that endlessly. 
He had Amy Maisner, the local astronomer, talk to them about the sense of frustration that the scientific community has with trying to articulate issues like climate change. So this is the project DiCaprio wanted to do to really honor the scientific community. Number 9. Ooh la la. How is it Timothée Chalamet is in literally every cool movie these days? How did he have time to film them all? From Dune to The French Dispatch and Don't Look Up all in 2021. And now he's kissing J-Law. Dang, this boy gets around. The, uh, movies we mean. But that's one spicy kiss. And if we didn't see that camera in the corner of this shot, we might just think this scene was real. So, uh, okay, maybe not. We know she's got a baby on the way with her loving gallerist husband, Cook Maroney. But we've got to say we love seeing Lawrence pushing her acting capabilities. Don't get us wrong, we loved the love triangle moody Katniss Everdeen in The Hunger Games. But Lawrence is capable of characters with some real gravitas. Number 10. Genius or Goofball? Jonah Hill was supposedly the worst to work with, according to Lawrence. The guy was just so funny she kept breaking character. An entire day was dedicated to filming Hill just throwing insults at Lawrence. And even Meryl Streep has some strong feelings about Jonah Hill. Who kind of was a thorn in my side. He was so funny, he had the goat cracking up. Number 11. Could just be Stockholm Syndrome. So it's no secret that this cast has a huge soft spot for each other. While it may just be Stockholm Syndrome, it could also just be a great group of actors creating magic. Maybe it's a bit of both. Jonah Hill kept calling Meryl Streep the GOAT, and she was completely unaware of the fact it's an acronym meaning greatest of all time. And I sort of thought, well, you, you kind of look like a GOAT. And she didn't even get offended by it. Well, DiCaprio thinks Lawrence is the Meryl Streep of this generation, and Streep called her the beating heart of this movie. And no, Jonah Hill did not enjoy throwing insults at J-Law. I did not enjoy making fun of Jen, because I love Jen. But he did enjoy making fun of DiCaprio, because DiCaprio likes to play the suave character and felt incredibly uncomfortable playing a nerd. And Meryl remembers playing alongside DiCaprio when he was just a little baby, or should we say 18. And now she thinks he's the best he's ever been in a career of highs. Ugh, so sweet. Number 12. Remember what happened last time Leo had a role on a boat? So the cast and crew got to film on a real freaking battleship for the movie. The Battleship Massachusetts in Fall River. And they had fireworks going off. It was a great experience for the whole town to have them filming there, and a great experience for the crew. Which is not always the case. Stars filled an entire parking lot, and the cast also got to shoot out of a real cargo plane. Lawrence recalls it being very cold. And that was tough, but it was one of the greatest days of my life. It sounds like filming Don't Look Up was a pretty wild experience. When the whole world was shut down for one end of world event, the cast was telling a whole other apocalyptic story. It's clear the movie is a parallel to climate change. The cast have said so themselves. And while this movie tells it in such a lighthearted way, maybe it's time we listen up? Okay, if you had to quarantine with one of the stars from the movie, who would you choose? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.